I think KDPMA has done some uh, interesting work already, and therefore I would request uh, Sunil Atawar to tell us an update on, uh, uh, you know, what, what has happened so far in terms of this situation that we are in, because everybody knows there will be a remarkable or a big change happening following this COVID-19 or following whenever this lockdown is over. <clears throat> and then, of course, the meeting starts with uh, Silesh as chairing the meeting. So, Sunil, on to you now. Thank you, Mr. Ahmed Ali, and good morning, everyone. Uh, first of all, I uh, thank DCIC and uh, Mr. Ahmed Ali for uh, f uh, f you know, having this meeting uh, uh, to bring together all the stalwarts of our uh, uh, Karnataka Pharma. Uh, so just uh, to what you call give you a background on what actually has been happening at the KDPMA at our level. And uh, in fact, uh, our, inter our interaction uh, on this started much before uh, the actual lockdown. Uh, Harish and I were in uh, Delhi for some other uh, meetings, uh, uh, government meeting, and uh, at that time, this uh, the first initial cases had just started. I think early March uh, it was uh, when this cases started, and uh, there was this discussion about availability of medicines and uh, uh, what's going to happen. But of course, uh, so at that time itself, we realized that uh, the one big challenge that uh, I think the, the country faces and we all face, and going forward, I think something that we should address very seriously is the lack of data. Uh, right in the beginning itself, uh, we realized that the government uh, was getting into a, a situation of a pandemic uh, uh, without really having sufficient data on the companies. Even today, they don't know how many companies exist in India, who manufactures what. In case of an emergency, which are the medicines that the, that the government needs? And uh, you know how, whom do they should approach in case of uh, you know, specific uh, you know, products that they need or specific volumes that they need. So I think we've gone into this uh, as, you know, on a basically day-to-day -day basis, like every step we are taking is uh, into the unknown. So right from then we realized that. And uh, of course we came back, uh, whatever data we could send to the government, uh, we send, uh, we were in interaction with them on. Sorry, I think I uh, the my mic muted. So uh, as I was saying, uh, we came back. We sent a lot of uh, information uh, back to uh, the government, and then of course the the lockdown uh, started and things like that. And as an association, we've been act interacting very very closely with the government of Karnataka as well as Department of Pharmaceuticals. Firstly, the government of Karnataka uh, initially uh, uh, started means asked all companies to absolutely shut down. I remember the first meetings we had and, and when we, we presented the case that, yes, COVID is a problem. Uh, this is a problem, but this does not mean that other sicknesses uh, will go away. So you can't stop pharma companies from, uh, from manufacturing. But uh, the initial uh, few days, the thinking was, no, no, uh, you should not. Uh, life is more important. Uh, this sickness is a problem, so we are not going to allow pharma companies to uh, to work. But then, of course, uh, they soon realized that this cannot happen. And being an essential uh, uh, you know, commodity, we, re we need to put pharma on the top of line for st to start. Uh, then, of course, came the story of sanitizers, where uh, the government was very uh, keen uh, to uh, see that there's sufficient stock of sanitizers in the market. So we've had multiple meetings on that. Uh, we had recommended to them that there is not enough capacity uh, for pharma companies to uh, to supply sanitizer in the market, and that's when they extended uh, the uh, licensing even to distillery companies uh, for uh, for sanitizers. Uh, so then uh, we've also uh, what you call been working with them on other issues, including the hottest issue currently on uh, on our cards is uh, about the uh, circular that came out from Ministry of Home Affairs uh, giving the guidelines. And saying that you know there were a couple of uh, very uh, clauses that, uh, which looked quite uh, absurd actually. One was that you should make arrangements for for everyone to stay in your premises. So we had to tell them that the law doesn't allow uh, people to stay in your factory premises. 
uh, you can't uh, and you can't create that kind of uh, infrastructure the second one was uh, uh, that in case anybody gets covid uh, gets infected in your factory basically the ceo and managing director would uh, would uh, you know have a problem uh, so these things also we have taken up at the highest level so uh, you know the, I, i think as kdpma we've been uh, with, uh, liaising with the government whenever uh, you know there's a the, things come up we've been keeping all our members informed of all the changes every day there are new notifications and new um, uh, you know guidelines that are coming we've also proactively send out a sop for to all companies on what could be the best practices uh, that they could follow uh, you know as a company to for to initiate uh, production and what are the precautions they need to take and i think uh, that was something very important because uh, in a couple of uh, industrial areas uh, the the local uh, uh, dcs came and there were raids or not raids or inspection and you know raid inspections and quite a few companies were shut down so uh, i think following those uh, guidelines would be very important uh, you know when you start so i think uh, uh, as kdpma and uh, i think a couple of learnings as i said that we have one is of course that uh, as a country as an association as a state we really need to have some data uh, readily available because even today we are taking decisions uh, without uh, you know on the basis of just i think 20% 30% uh, uh, of information that we have Uh, the other thing is i think collaborating uh, which we have seen that because of uh, you know every company is every doing their individual uh, kind of uh, you know mitigation plans and all that but a collaborative effort of uh, clusters like state clusters or uh, even like i'm just seeing that today all of us individually are struggling with transportation but as an association if we had got together at some point then we possibly we could have you know had the collaborative uh, transportation of materials getting in raw materials supplying raw materials we could have collaboratively uh, negotiated with uh, you know with companies uh, uh, going forward so i think uh, as an association this has been uh, quite a learning and as a company also uh, it i think the uh, if we go back uh, to being our normal selves going forward i think uh, nothing much will be learned and i i hope that uh, uh, you know this great uh, tragedy that we are still enduring and going through actually brings out some good uh, uh, going forward uh, so thank you and with that i'll uh, pass it on to mr sailesh ayengar who's uh, consented and uh, thank you sailesh for uh, agreeing to be the moderator for uh, today's meeting thank you very much sunil um, and uh, of course to bcic and uh, kdmpa uh, KD, kdpma um, all the staff members who have worked very hard for this uh, and especially rupa uh, and uh, and of course uh, president uh, mr agarwal uh, thank you so much uh, for uh, for this a uh, unique uh, um, event uh, or a round table uh, with our bangalore based ceos uh, on a very very important topic of how do we tackle post covid challenges and the opportunities i think if we had to get 33 people uh, in bangalore at 11 o'clock uh, in one of the locations it would have been practically impossible so one of the things this covid has definitely done is shown us that technology can bring all of us uh, in one platform on a working day at 11 o'clock uh, this would have been practically impossible uh, if we had to meet physically so there are some uh, fringe benefits that i can see that we are all adopting to technology having said that uh, about a month month and a half ago if anybody would have been asked how would you manage your company's working staff completely operating from home none of us would have been able to really give a solution or even believe that this is possible but today we are seeing that we have adapted we have adapted to working from home and i think we have started making progress uh, in our respective companies this also shows that these are we are passing through an extraordinary time in our lives i call it as a black swan uh, time of our life 
never before we have ever seen anything of this nature and to some extent every day practically every hour we are learning something totally new it's a once in a lifetime uh, uh, in our generation that we are seeing a situation like this our objective today is essentially two folds one is that we are going to learn from each other each one of us have solutions we have our challenges we have worked on our problems but the objective is to share objective is to collaborate because these are extraordinary times these are not normal times and when you are in extraordinary times you do extraordinary things so our objective today is also to be open and if anybody has some solutions some ideas something that they have done in their company it will be great to share those things and the second one is to really get just one idea if we can pick up from today's one and a half hours that we are spending together and that we can take it back to our organization that itself would be more than the worth the time that we are spending here before we set the context i just want to mention that at the at the all india level there has been tremendous amount of activities ever since we went into lockdown there are three major associations for pharmaceuticals one is what is known as idma indian drug manufacturing association there is ipa indian pharmaceutical alliance and there is oppi which is organization of pharmaceutical producers of india now these three associations have for the first time come together the director generals of these three associations are meeting every day on on a call like this and in turn they are getting information on the manufacturing side on the supply side on the regulatory side and the availability of the medicines both for domestic as well as for exports and they are communicating with the department of pharmaceuticals as a result every day evening there is a communication between the associations and the department of pharmaceuticals friends you will be pleased to know that thanks to these kind of initiatives i think healthcare industry is getting tremendous support from the government right from the prime minister's office for the first time they have started trusting the healthcare industry rather than looking at us every time with one or the other draconian regulations today they have realized that globally india is being recognized as a reliable partner to fight against coronavirus not only that we have supplied the hydroxychloroquine and azithromycin tablets in millions and million uh, doses but we are also being partnered to develop the vaccine that's being uh, you know looked at Uh, by number of countries today there are all, almost 40 vaccines in the development and india is also participating in this whole initiative today if you go to latin america you go to japan you go to united states people are saying there is a real good reason why we should be partnering with india and we should reduce our reliance to china now this has all happened to a great extent in the last one month because the government has got now confidence that pharma industry would would stand by uh, is capable of managing this crisis and uh, and and this would augur well going forward uh, for all of us to look at the opportunities that we can really unleash going forward now i will request rupa to just put up that one slide if possible onto the screen which will help us to uh, utilize our time my objective is to ensure that you participate and also to do a bit of time management i promise you that we will close it at 12:30 sharp so that you have other priorities to attend and we will not uh, overshoot the time so let me at this time uh, uh, say that we want to address uh, basically two major things one is post covid as soon as the lockdown is lifted in the first 100 days what are going to be the challenges that we are going to face and i thought for the for the sake of discussions we will list out three major issues one is health and safety particularly of our employees what measures we need to take both in the plant as well as in the marketplace and in the in the offices 
Number two, the business continuity. Obviously, it is extremely important. What kind of supply chain related issues that we will face? What type of customer engagement we will have to do both internally to ensure that our people are motivated and continue to remain engaged. At the same time, we have to discuss what kind of challenges we will face externally with our doctors, patients, as well as with our chemists and distributors. Obviously, interrelated to all this is HR related topics. We know that as a result of COVID, we have asked people to work from home. When post COVID, what are the implications of this? There are going to be challenges for many of our member companies who will have cash related issues. How can we manage some of the human resources challenges that we have? And Mr. Amadali is here and so many of you will be able to contribute uh, on this particular topic. Most important for all of us is the cost management. It's never going to be the same. So going forward, how do we ensure that we manage our cost? And if as everybody says cash is a king, how do we manage the cash situation? Once we do this here and now situation for the first 100 days, we will start looking at some of the opportunities going forward. And some of the things that I have listed here very quickly, how do we establish biopharma devices, diagnostic industry as a reliable partner with government and society? This is a once in a lifetime opportunity. We have a great image created right now. How do we ensure that going forward, we remain a very reliable partner? Technology is going to play a major role going forward. Some thoughts on how can we uh, use the technology uh, to engage with our customers and patients. And finally, there is a real opportunity for us to collaborate and truly make India as a hub for global quality and safety standards and provide uh, you know global solutions so there are opportunities in 365 days and beyond post covid where india can play a major role and each one of us can play a major role so let me stop here i'm sorry i taken a little longer than what i wanted to do and let me open up the first discussion topic health and safety of employees i request anyone of you to please share what you believe on this topic in terms of your company's response let's keep it short maybe a minute or two and if anybody else wants to sort of uh, stay on this uh, i would request you to please uh, make your comment okay so first topic uh, first topic we will take up is health and safety of employees it would be great May I request you to please mute your, uh, um, you know, if you're not speaking, please mute your mic because we can hear whatever you you, you speak, uh, even uh, if you are speaking on phone or with your colleagues. Everybody can hear it. Thank you. So over to the team um, who will start probably on. Uh, uh, let me just say this, you know, that it, these are the times as a healthcare industry, we need to walk the talk when it comes to health and safety of employees. Uh, this is and, Sandeep. Sorry, yeah, go sorry. ahead, please. So let me tell you what our concerns are and what we have done as a company, as I'm sure many of our fellow uh, companies have done the same. Uh, I'll talk about the concerns first. The biggest concern we have today is transport for the employees coming to the office. Forget about the police checkpoints and all of that. That's a separate topic of discussion. I'm talking about the physical transportation, for example, public transport once that reopens. So one of the things that we did, we saw this happening, and uh, what we suggested to people is that avoid public transport. So we, we gave them allowances to buy bikes, bicycles, and stuff like that. So you know, they can uh, manage to come to work more easily without being dependent on public transport. So that's the first thing we did. The second thing, uh, and that's not insufficient, by the way, we were able to maybe cover 20 or 30 percent of the staff that would require that, um, only because everything shut down right after that. Once the person enters the premises, we have them temperature checked and hand sanitized, and of course the facilities themselves are disinfected numerous times a day. 
and we had already hired in a, a team um, maybe two months ago or something to do that. Uh, so that's what we have done. I'm sure most of the other companies are following the same uh, practices. Beyond that, uh, we have now ordered um, thermal scanners, which by the way is available um, with 10, 15 days notice from a couple of companies in Bangalore which will automatically, like the airport, be able to scan the temperature and record the temperature of anybody entering your premises. So this is especially important for us that have two, three hundred workers or more in manufacturing, you know, kind of setups where everybody's coming in in shifts. So it's, there's a lot of this thing. And of course, you've got to maintain the social distancing, which is a real complicated issue, especially during lunch. So we don't allow more than four people to sit on a table you know, basically the four corners of the table and all those little practices and learnings have been put in place. But it's it's a new challenge every day and it's a new learning every day. Great, great point, Sunil. Thank you so much. One follow-up question to you, Sunil. Do you have a team which is dedicated to looking at these aspects, both at workplace, in factory? Uh, is there a, um, you know, a specific... Uh, um, task force that you have put on, on health and safety? So we saw this um, very early, even late December. Um, so we, I think, <clears throat> around the first week of January, constituted a team both for pharma and Bioplast. We put together a COVID management team. So the COVID management team was led by Dr. Janta, who is our medical director. So he was first responsible for understanding what the, you know, what how the approach and what, what needs to be done, what we need to learn, frankly. Second, um, what's needed from a health and safety perspective. Um, see what can be done from, um, you know, distancing perspective. Or we started working in staggered lots, especially in the offices, uh, almost immediately. So this is not new when the government announced it, but. We started, I don't know, several weeks before that. Um, we did the same thing with the R&D setup. We did the same thing with the QA setup, QC setup. Um, so where we could, we did. And then we learned that that wasn't necessarily working. So we started bringing more people back to work, especially in the technical areas, because things were getting piled up. <clears throat> um, but to answer the question, yes, we have a team. Uh, we have a, we have site management for the different locations that we have, and then we have a group management, and everybody's on a chat group, and there's an update provided every evening, and anybody in the team, which includes HR and uh, includes uh, the medical team, there's a 24-hour helpline for any staff or their family members. Most important. Uh, because while we are worried about the health of our employees, keep in mind the health of our employees is directly correlated to the health of the people that we live with. So putting sanitization, other practices in place uh, in each of their homes was one of our critical components in terms of you know planning. And third is we open financial aid to anybody who needs it without question. So if you or your family member, it could be your mother, your father, your son, your child, requires medical assistance or any other assistance that's available. I mean, subject to certain rules. Yeah, we don't want to make abuses. But we have to do it. Because, again, it goes back to the, um, the, the, the health and well-being, mental, physical, whatever you call it, of that person to know that, look, he's part of the business family or the company. And any assistance required, it's centralized, it's available, and it's real time. There's no, we'll cut back to you after three days. It's, it's a yes or a no, go ahead in two hours or one hour or 30 minutes. So the response times for everything, all decision making, whether it's customer engagement or supplier engagement or new business development or whatever, is all happening real time. And the government, I must say, has been extremely supportive. I mean, KPDMA, I, I interact with Harish. I don't know, three times a day minimum, maybe four times a day. Um, the team has been fantastic. Really, thank you guys. And um, the, the government has been incredibly responsive. So this is going off the topic, but I have fantastic. to share my appreciation on that. And it's instant. No, it's on the mobile. You just WhatsApp. You get an answer in three minutes, even at the secretarial level. 
It's unbelievable. And this is unparalleled and this is right across the country. Great point. Great point, Sandeep. And I think that is the spirit, uh, I think, what is happening, which we have never witnessed in the past. But let me ask other colleagues, uh, please, uh, you know, Sandeep has given us a insight, you know, in terms of why it is so important, what we stand for as a company when it comes to employees and their health. I think this is an example of uh, what what uh, his company has been doing. But uh, friends, are there any any other thoughts? Yeah, I'd, I'd like yes. to speak a few things. Can uh, I ask? Uh, yeah. Just on the uh, safety are. of the employees, uh, what what's, we are trying to do is, uh, apart from taking the temperature and the hand sanitizers are used and liquid soap is given, what is very important is all the workstations we are trying to clean with 70% IPA, thrice a day, workstations and the chairs, 70% IPA. And we every two hours, we also clean our canteen and our toilets with 1% sodium hypochlorite hypo solution. Okay, that's very important where there is a gathering is there. This will add a lot of value. Okay, so it's very important. We don't allow any outsiders to enter the office. That's completely banned. We don't allow. And uh, the, it is up to uh, what is the most important thing is the effective communication with the employees. Unless the employees are going to tell you that they have a problem, we will not know about it. In either there's a problem in the family, some member is not well, or they themselves are not well. And this has to be communicated very effectively by the HR to talk to them, to be very open and tell us there is a problem. So th this is important. We found that many employees at the lower level, they don't come and tell you. And uh, then immediately when such cases are there, we are referring to the nearest fever clinic because we can't do anything. So uh, that care has to be taken. Beyond it's all employees, communication is the most important. That's it. <clears throat> can I Thank come you. in? Yeah. Uh, can I just start, can I just add on some points? Hello? Yeah. Uh, yes, please. Yeah. Yes, please. Yeah. Uh, Mr. See, uh, uh, okay. Uh, I'll not take much time. Uh, see, it's uh, we have realized that it's it gets easier to really manage the things in the office, but whereas the work, uh, no, where the the manufacturing activities have been happening on, there it's going to be a big challenge because you have to interact with the people. Those are not been very highly qualified. And uh, uh, we have not made only the, uh, the HR person responsible, rather we have made all the HODs responsible. And every day they've been just reviewing the cameras, which has been look, you know, installed in different corners to find out which are the people, those who are not following the, the basic uh, 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 safety precaution, which is supposed to be followed at this point of time. And in the evening, every day, they are just been taking those uh, clippings, recordings, and been sharing with the people. Uh, uh, in every department, just to make sure uh, to make them more vigilant for the uh, for the next day, and that's really been helping out because in the initial phase we could find out the people were bypassing the basic safety, but we have seen now 90% of the people have been very much concerned, and we also been trying to communicate to them that it is not only your safety; you will be safe where the other guy has been safe. So the we are trying to tell them like the people those are coming from the remote the areas like villagers, the the workmen, the contract guys. They should really be taught first because they are the people, those who have been exposed to an unhygienic condition the most. So gradually we are really trying to control it. Second thing is we were finding out that lots of people coming to the offices for collection of the payments and everything. So you have made our accounts department uh, concern like every payment, whatever has been getting due is better to send electronically, use the RTGS, any of you, whatever it could be. But don't allow the people to come out to your offices and uh, no, expose your own stuff. These are a few points which I wanted to add on. Thank you. Um, Brilliant. Uh, Absolutely. Yes, please. Yeah, Suresh Khanna here. Yeah. Hi, Suresh. I have to leave for a dental emergency, so I just said I'll just put in a oh. word and I have got an extraction with a lot of problems. Oh, my God. Please take care. So, yeah, the only thing is that I'm uh, the challenge is that a lot of cases are now becoming asymptomatic. Now, that is going to be a big challenge because taking the temperature or uh, history will there are so many cases being asymptomatic i don't know how we are going to handle that uh, if there are any views on that because uh, this is going to be a major uh, challenge i just wanted to know if anybody has any solution to this Suresh, if I can speak, uh, the only real solution to that, if a person has been infected, let's say a week ago, is an antibody test. 
And unfortunately, um, and in fact, we had partnered up with the first US FDA approved antibody test provider to bring it to India. Um, and the government decided to go on an L1 basis, uh, which has resulted in a disaster because what they have bought is bought from a company which the UK bought, which doesn't work. And we all knew that the day it happened. Uh, and these tests are not cheap. So how often are you going to give it? And are we going to be allowed to individually administer it at our premises? A big question. But there's no other way to do it. That's a real challenge. And it's, by the way, it's almost 80% of the cases. That's the expected number. It's not 5% we're talking about. So it's four out of five individuals working in your office or your factory or you meet. In some ways, that's good for us to build herd immunity, by the way, as a country as well. There's a flip side to it. Yeah, and, and uh, let me just say that there are some brilliant questions coming up on the chat box. Um, I know that it won't be possible to address all of them right away, but I, I would, I would suggest that we would take up these questions and ensure that we have, a, for example, a very nice question: Can we know what is the SOP or a protocol if any of our employee is found infected? I think this is going to happen to any company. So we need to have a very good, well thought out SOP, and we will take this uh, as a sort of post this meeting uh, follow up to ensure that we provide that these uh, these answers. But in the interest of time, uh, I just want to summarize to say every CEO or every person in this room understands how important it is that COVID is not going to go away. It is going to continue for a long, long time, and we need to have systems and processes in our organization, both at workplace, at, uh, at field force level, and in the factories to ensure that the social distancing is kept, as well as all the other communication part that our participants have already uh, explained. So this becomes a very, very important aspect for all of us. Let's move to the next topic, which is supply chain. And I know that this is one area where all of us are currently grappling with in terms of uh, the attendance in our factories uh, and uh, going forward, you know, what would be the situation with uh, raw material supplies? Some suppliers are likely to go into insolvency. How do you manage this kind of a scenario? And, uh, and also interstate transportation, uh, which is also going to be quite a significant challenge, the inventories that we will hold. So let me open up this topic uh, of how you are concerned and uh, how you see post covid uh, these challenges uh, how do we tackle them uh, for for uh, uh, in our uh, individual companies as well as broadly speaking for all of us Any anyone who would like to just make a initial comment of yeah, uh, how do how do you see the supply chain issues? Yes, please. Uh, Arif, yeah. 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 Hello, Arif. Yeah. Uh, see, uh, considering we are a CMO, uh, so considering uh, we are hundred percent dependent on our customers on the material front. So we started uh, having a continuous, regular, rigorous follow with all our uh, customers as well as uh, the suppliers. Suppliers. So we are in regularly in touch with them to have a materials in place in advance for at least three to four months so that we will have a sufficient materials at site even though uh, we are working at a limited capacities which will give us a leverage if at all there is any uh, as everyone knows as you also mentioned covid doesn't go immediately so we need to have this continuity of availability of uh, materials without materials even though we mobilize employees we will not be able to operate the plants at whatever capacity and uh, provide the essential medicine to the market as well as the needy patient. So this is what we have done it, and to some extent we are we achieved the success in achieving these aspect. It's 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 a great point, Arif. I think uh, it's a great learning for all of us that you are already proactively reaching out uh, to your uh, your uh, suppliers and giving them in advance, you know, what your requirement would be. Any uh, other see, thoughts from? Yeah, yeah, that challenge. See, the problem yeah. which the companies like us are facing is every supplier, however, want the payment to be made in cash or an advance payment. 
and our customers suppose they're in europe they will talk to us only in december or january well, the problem is how many people we can make an advance payment and then hold it on because apart from that we are also planned, expected to pay salaries so the problem is going to be multifold and uh, many of the employees who are not come for work we can't force them we still have to pay them also so uh, the, the supply chain in case of a company like us which is a R&D company it's getting extremely difficult because there is only an input and there is no output so it's, it's a real problem for us so uh, uh, the whole supply chain will get disrupted because certain excipients which are not very common are going to be in short supply and we have been getting the indication that better you buy and keep so how much you can buy and keep and the prices are not controlled anymore the suppose in india the npp is controlling the prices for the finished product but the input costs are not controlled so it is going to be very very difficult because the inputs intermediates are not coming from china for the api manufacturers so they are increasing the prices excipients are going to be difficult and the output cost will remain same so the challenge is going to be difficult because it will stop one place it will stop it and then what we're going to do we don't know so it's it's quite complex it's a great point, Bhutra Saab. I think uh, uh, this is something that we will need to address both from, uh, uh, you know, from this systemic point of view, what kind of support we can expect from the government uh, or the even financial institutions for these suppliers uh, to ensure that uh, uh, they have, uh, you know, facilities available for them to continue to manufacture these ingredients uh, and, and uh, excipients which are so critical for continuation of our manufacturing. So yeah, that's that's a very, very important point. Any other I, issues that you think? Yes, please. Praveen here, uh, uh, you know, in terms of uh, providing liquidity to the supplier, and it is much prior to the COVID days, there is a very, very functional uh, discounting system called TREDS, which is implemented by the government and, by, and obliged by all the banks to implement. If all your suppliers and you are members of trades, this is a trade discounting system. The supplier can get money within 24 hours, especially the MSME suppliers and the small scale sectors. It's a compulsive discounting system by the government of India. So, you know, it is good that we can encourage all the suppliers to get onto trades. We can also be in trades and, you know, in terms of liquidity, this can offer a very quick liquidity to the suppliers. So, you know, the government has been pushing it, but this is a good time to, to encourage suppliers to get on trade. It's not very expensive. It's a simple registration on the website. A great suggestion, Pravin. Sunil, any thoughts on this? Uh, from the association perspective, can we, can we take this up with, at least to the banking uh, sector? I one. I think the other day when we uh, spoke, uh, also we discussed uh, that uh, if as an association, or actually all associations write to uh, uh, to the banking circles uh, on the margins, I think all of us, as Praveen had uh, uh, pointed out the other day, that all of us work uh, or our working capital requirements uh, on stock and debtors, the banks usually keep about 20-25% margin. If we can actually collectively write uh, uh, to either reduce it to zero, or if not zero, at least five percent or whatever, I think that will, uh, you know, immediately release about 20, 25 percent additional uh, yeah, working capital uh, into the system. So I think that that's something that uh, that can be done at the at the association uh, level, and I think we'll we'll take that forward. Uh, also, I think for uh, the SMEs, uh, uh, the SID, I, I don't know how the government will is going to support SIDBI uh, to kind of uh, you know further uh, lend to to the SME sector because uh, a few years back uh, they were uh, giving uh, since SMEs were under the priority sector there was a discount on on loans and uh, on interest rate I think there was a three or four percent subvention so a, a scheme uh, in which Kotak and other banks came forward and were offering. Uh, uh, pretty lucrative terms uh, to SME. So I think uh, these are the things that we can do at the association. Great point, Sunil. Thank you for that. Yeah. Now, let just me ask. Uh, yeah, yes, what, please. What, yes, please. Uh, just to add on what Mr. Sunil has spoken to, I think we can also make a request to the bank uh, because wherever the imports element is involved in, which I'm sure every pharma company has to depend on, 
there's something called the margin money which the bank they charge from 10 percent to 20 percent depends upon the the classification of the clients i think that is another question where we can make a request uh, through various associations to really bring it down to five or maybe one lower than that thank you uh, just to very add practical one point, uh, and great suggestion yes please one, one point state bank of india has issued a circular yesterday i have not seen it but i believe that uh, any working capital is available to you 20 percent of additional working capital can be given ad hoc to them now this is only with state bank of india not with other banks sunil we need to check on the validity of this what sure. sure working capital yeah, 20 percent can be given ad hoc automatically Mm -hmm. oh, thanks for that information, Botra Sahab. That's that's, yeah, we, that's uh, really interesting. Yeah, and if if SBI has agreed, that's a big thing. So let's let's move on to the marketplace. Uh, and and when our uh, you know two things that comes to my mind, what about manufacturing? Are we really in a position to say that post COVID, our operations will be in full uh, full strength? Because when you talk about uh, uh, you know social distancing and maybe you are going to operate in two shifts rather than three shifts or whatever shifts that you are operating, you will have to reduce that. How do you manage demand supply situation? What are the thoughts here? No, I think uh, we are in this for the long term. Uh, it's not going to be. Uh, it's it's definitely not a short term uh, uh, you know situation which is going to get. Okay, within two months, three months, four, I don't know. I, uh, my my take, very personal take is that because we are in the dental field and I think dentists are already looking at one year, uh, you know, uh, uh, of, of challenges. Even post that, even they are, in fact, they have reached out to me and to, uh, to us as another thing. So how, what SOP they should follow? Because will they just allow patients to sit, 40 patients and 30 patients to sit in a clinic? Uh, will they be having? Uh, will they have to cut down their uh, uh, what you call appointments from 20 a day to 10 a day? How will hospitals manage? So I think the situation uh, is like is very very fluid at the moment. So I so I I think companies would need to plan for a one year kind of a window to understand because I think even if manufacturing starts, which is the easier uh, of the two between manufacturing and demand, I think if uh, uh, supply could start faster. But I think demand will take a long time to pick up because I, I don't think that uh, uh, what you call uh, the demand is going to come back to normal. Of course, there will be a few sect, a few products, few sectors, a uh, few uh, what you call uh, you know groups which will uh, increase. But I'm, I'm, on an overall level, I think it's looking at a one year. There again, uh, the challenge is going to be how uh, the SOP you have for your medical reps. Can a medical rep just walk into a clinic? Maybe doctors would, you know, the reaction, I, you know, we have to plan what will be the reaction. Whether we move to an appointment, we, in India, we never had appointments with doctors. So maybe we have to move a, to a situation where a rep will take an appointment and go to a doctor. Uh, so things like that are going to be the new, uh, new game. And I think we need to uh, uh, basically, so I think the challenge is going to be for the next one year, we should, we should be planning uh, that demand will be slow or reduced. Uh, you know, for the for the coming year. Yeah, I, th I think Sunil, absolutely well said. Um, any other thoughts on this topic, especially with regard to um, the demand side, uh, when we are talking about interface with hospitals, with doctors, uh, our medical reps jobs, um, how do you see this evolving and how are we getting prepared for this? You know, uh, the feedback that I have from my brother and others in the industry is that there has been a significant decline in footfalls in hospitals and clinics. <clears throat> Doctor friends of mine and people who own major hospitals have complained that they're working at 10, 15 percent. So, you know, what Sunil just said, I think you're looking at maybe a 30, 40 percent overall decline and at least the acute segment, okay, I mean, the the diabetic and the cardio guy is going to continue buying his medicine no matter what. Uh, but there's going to be an overall decline in the industry without question over the next 12 months. And also one benefit, if you look at the positives from the social distancing that has happened, is that disease transmission, infectious diseases, that kind of stuff is, is falling dramatically. So there's also from, from that perspective, uh, there, is a, there is a decline in... Uh, uh, in requirements, so to speak. 
And I think the other thing that what doctors are doing currently is they're trying to engage online. So I know a very dear friend of mine is a very senior doctor in Bangalore, just sent out a chat yesterday saying, you need to connect with me, book an appointment online, whatever, some link, web link. I don't know exactly, I haven't tried it as yet, but those kinds of services are becoming um, more frequent as well. So one of the things from a reps perspective, we need to evaluate, even if it's feasible, is it can we do the same thing with reps connecting with doctors, meaning digital, rather than physically? That is one point. Yeah. Uh, in, in terms of demand creations by the rep, and I'm looking at long term, you know, the long term situation will be like everything else, this will also move very largely on a digital platform. I think the companies will come to define what is called the digital detailing, wherein instead of many of the medical representatives meeting the doctors, you will be now getting doctors on a common platform and I have a, what I call the institutionalized digital detailing. It will be not run by only by the representative, but it will be run from the institution itself, the companies itself, where at an appointed time through a web-based digital detailing, you will get a common uh, set of doctors on a platform for 10, 15 minutes. And then uh, have a very focused, pointed, and a very, very informative detailing for about 10 or 15 minutes maximum so that you can give absolute value for money and the digital uh, detailing. So it will become a digital detailing medium and companies will have to now start working on this and uh, I don't know how much time it will take, but maybe by a year or so, a large part of organizations will get into this mode. So again, it will be very good if there is a collaborative effort because it's a very cost intensive exercise and if the associations and the forums can take a common path on this, then uh, you know a common program can be found out where small companies, large companies can see how they can get into digital detailing. Uh, I do believe that digital detailing uh, will be there. I'm also speaking from an experience of our company in South Africa, which is already uh, working now on digital detailing. Now. So this could be something as a reality for India as well. Yeah. Pravin, great, great point. And Sandeep, thank you. Can yeah, I, yeah, yes, Ahmed. Yeah. The thing is that, I, um, you know, I'm sure the operating, commercial operations will know this. Uh, medical reps are not being allowed now to work. You know that. In fact, yesterday, uh, it came on some local TV in Bombay about a micro lab uh, guy being caught and questioned, why, why is he? canvassing for business and some clarification has been issued. I don't want to go into the details, but FMRAI, the unions are objecting medical reps working. Yeah, I don't know how long will this go on, but even then, Silesh, you are the best man to talk about this. Will digital detailing work? Because from the article that I've been reading, although in the Western world, uh, Still, physically going and meeting doctors and detailing is what is getting business, is what I'm told. Now, people like you or Sandeep or Sunil will know more because you are currently in operations. But uh, how much digital detailing will the doctor will have the inclination to, to look at detailing that way? I don't know. I'm not sure. Maybe post-COVID things may change. But as of now, this is the concern that a lot of my clients have been talking to me. All right. So Great point, Ahmed. Wanted... Thank you. Yeah. In fact, uh, uh, you know, see, uh, yeah. yes, please. No, uh, actually, digital detailing, like normal detailing, uh, also will require a differentiation. Uh, uh, I can say from experience, and I'm on a few digital marketing forums, uh, you know, uh, where uh, there has been an overdose of uh, digital in the last one month with the doctors. In fact, it's it's created a fatigue level where doctors are actually pushing back. So yes. it's the, the worry is that, again, you have to get back and see how will you differentiate yourself? Uh, because uh, uh, how will you uh, be unique in the market? It cannot be OK. Digital detailing means I just you know bombard the doctor with information or uh, call them together because everybody can adapt to uh, these things uh, pretty quickly. Uh, so I think uh, like any marketing, uh, uh, digital marketing also will require a, a high sense of differentiation 
you will have to find your niche uh, you'll have to find uh, how you're going to uh, what you call reach out to the doctors without uh, because there they can just shut you off and that's what is happening uh, at, at already uh, uh, you know because everybody has gone uh, digital in this time trying to do online detailing try to do online seminars things like that so it will actually make create a, a, a more serious uh, problem so companies need to get into it with their eyes open uh, looking at uh, you know how we can differentiate how can we be unique how can we uh, you know don't take away the marketing from detailing uh, from just because you are going digital ensure that your marketing team and your marketing managers are the core to it and not just a technology person it's a great advice sunil uh, i think absolutely spot on i i think this is a watch this space situation it's evolving uh, and and we are seeing uh, uh, already indication as as uh, sandeep already mentioned to us hospitals are not allowing people to come in because they want to protect more and more uh, the space there because it's likely to be the place where this infection can spread and uh, and doctors are scared uh, of uh, of allowing people to come in especially senior uh, age doctors so this is going to be one of our ceo's biggest concern going forward you have a large team most of us have got large team in the marketplace and their relevance uh, in this situation how far it is going to remain i'm at to your point yes until yesterday it was face to face which was always the case in pharma industry but this is not the same case the world has changed since covid and how it is going to evolve is anybody's guess uh and we have to be prepared we have to and as uh, as uh, sunil said it has to be differentiated uh, and we'll have to prepare our teams to start setting up scenarios what will happen if we are able to do a detailing time and slot available in a particular hospital how are we going to use that 10 minutes available to us with the right kind of marketing and scientific messages to convey our uh, our company's Uh, ethos our products or whatever we want to talk about i think it's a large area to be something that we should do but one thing i would like to share with you is the associations have written to the uh, medical associations of doctors in various specialties to say that post covid they should continue to cooperate with pharma industry when we are coming to with our messages with our products and stopping our medical reps completely Uh, would be a great disservice to the kind of relationship that we have so there are some dialogues which are currently ongoing and we can see going forward some instructions will come from the association to to establish some kind of norm uh, for our medical reps to meet the doctors and we will share with you as soon as these uh, you know some fruitful discussion do take place but yes this is going to be a big challenge any other thoughts on this topic from uh, from the participants so silage this yeah okay. this concept of not physical detailing has already been in practice in many parts of the world as you know right okay. exception of you know new molecules being introduced in major markets everything else has been digital for over 2 years uh, yeah uh, so there is a, a very big international company well, not a very big company but a very innovative company which is run out of bulgaria by my friend it's called credoweb.com i've just put it up over here they have been engaging with a number of big pharma companies i forget the name but maybe zydus or somebody has already started with them so they have a pretty unique platform for digital engagement it's expensive but it's worth looking into if anybody wants to connect i've already posted it on on the chat over there and look yeah. this is the way future we have a real issue um doctors are not going to allow reps back into their room many times soon yeah absolutely true and and sandeep if i may put one more point for all of your consideration is that you have very well planned your manufacturing teams when they enter the plants how they will be taken care of the social distancing that you are doing in fact dr reddy says come up with and many of you might have seen it a lovely video which is just about 3 minutes but they show how the employees are brought to the plant how they are maintaining the distancing you know how they have got the packaging units kept separately just to sort of give confidence even to the employees families that they are safe uh, and that we are taking all precautions i would like to ask you to consider 
what would you do for your med, med reps uh, who are also going and risking to some extent, you know, traveling, going into various places, meeting the doctors, going to the hospitals and so on and so forth. Um, what kind of precautions that you are asking them to take in terms of the, you know, social distancing, the masks, the, the stuff that they would use to ensure that uh, they are constantly keeping themselves safe. This would go a long way, even by convincing the doctors that when my representative enters your clinic, he's taking all the precautions uh, and, and you can be rest assured that we will not send a, a one of our representative who is not feeling well and that we have been fully trained these people. So I think that would be something that I would recommend you to consider for your respective companies. Uh, that would give a lot of confidence. The name of the game is going to be differentiator. If the doctor feels that you as a company have taken care of your employees to such an extent that if he walks into my clinic, I am safe. I think that would be a huge plus that we can offer. Yeah. Yeah. So let's yeah. sort of uh, uh, continue in our journey. We have come 12 o'clock. We've got another 30 minutes left and very important topic I want to to really uh, raise here is about cost. Uh, I think we are running into a situation. Uh, Ahmed, you are on uh, um, mute. So can you unmute and ask? I am unmuted. I, I am unmuted. Uh, you have touched upon some HR related issues here, but let me yes. say a few concerns. I think uh, all of you should bear this in mind. I'm sure you already know. One of the concerns is about, uh, you know, March, April salaries. Okay, March has been paid April. The government is saying you must pay. Yeah, uh, the unions are insisting that you must pay. Uh, employees expect the salary. Organizations, particularly the smaller ones, are saying we don't have the money to pay. And the government is saying we don't have, we don't have the funds to support you. Now, there's one big challenge. I don't. I'm sure. If anybody has an, any answers to that, we can discuss. And this might even continue later. Post-COVID, the issue is that I'm sure the working methods and systems will change. Perhaps we'll go for staggered shift. Perhaps we may want to do something more. Now, how do we plan this? How do, and say for you did say about uh, Dr. Reddy's uh, video was great, simply superb. Yeah so much of care they are using biometrics and you know uh, nobody is touching any punch card and things like that and they are offering buses when they get get down from the buses there is a the social distancing observed in the canteen everybody is sitting uh, six feet aside now is this all possible for a small organization are issues that are being you know i it comes to me also because most of my clients are also smaller clients yeah how do they may, may, uh, uh, manage this? Secondly, what do we do for the increment for April of this year? Uh, are we Do we give it the same as last year or do we give less or more? I don't know whether you want to discuss it here, but there has been approached by some one of you that if we could at least talk about it, because should we give 50% of what we give, gave last year or not? Because this is all going to have an impact on the cost. So before you go to the cost and cash management part, I thought I should at least raise this no. flag on this forum. Okay. Oh, no, absolutely, absolutely valuable, Ahmed. In fact, uh, uh, manpower in our industry is one of the largest component of cost. So, so you have addressed uh, the the right point here, and I would open it up for our colleagues uh, to share your own thoughts on this. I know this is company specific. But in general, it would really, really help if you could please uh, share your thoughts on how do you see uh, managing uh, some of these very sensitive topics uh, of uh, salary increments, allowances, uh, and, and so on and so those forth. Who work from home, should the remuneration be the same as people who work from, as both of us have said, some people are not coming to work. They're trying not to come to work. You force them. Is not right. So, what do we do with those? Do we differentiate in salary between the people who are coming or not coming? So, these are issues which uh, you know uh, are disturbing the minds of some of you here. 
this is a uh, karan here may uh, have yes, a karan. point um so we've been thinking about this we've not made a decision yet but would love everyone's opinion here one idea we came up with i mean uh for especially the issue with the april salary march i think everyone went ahead and paid everyone salary and didn't do much but in april since we are essential service providers a lot of employees in our industry went to their hometown are unable to come back uh, uh due to the lockdown and now government is telling us that we should pay their salary one idea we had was to give them advance leave and then deduct this leave uh for the year or from the balance leave that they have uh so that they from a money standpoint they are not affected but then they cannot take leave for the rest of the year so this was one idea we had uh would love to hear thoughts of what other people are thinking thank you for yeah, sharing uh, current really appreciate it yes sunil yeah that that's exactly what uh, what we've already done uh, we've kind of uh, so there are three categories of uh, people one is if you work from home uh, the expectation is that your outcome is as good as uh, uh, what you were in office especially for the i'm talking from the office point of view so uh, there we have not differentiated between work from home and if you came to office now uh, in the factories of people uh, have means if they are uh, willing to come and we can bring them they have, they've been coming they'll be you know, but those who left uh, kind of this, the the state or went back uh, there's exactly what we we've already done what uh, as karan suggested that we've said you can advance your leave even if you don't have leave you, this this it's we're just getting into the new year so Uh, you can prepone your leave, and uh, you will be paid your salaries. You won't, uh, but you, you, it will be adjusted against the pending leave. So in that way, the the employee is not uh, kind of affected financially uh, on it. Thank you for sharing, Sunil. Anybody else uh, would like to share? News. Uh, uh, sorry, shall I share news a little different here? Uh, yes, we, we have spoken to our employees Sorry. and told them that we are going through difficult times and whether they will like to take a voluntary salary cut and any salary cut taken and when we come back maybe after three months six months or one year we will, when we do well we will definitely reimburse that mm-hmm. right now we said you can voluntarily come and uh, this is not for all the employees but at the high scale more of the cabin managers and we are waiting for the results whether they will like to come forward and say we'll take a salary cut the question of increment does not arise there is no question of any increment discussion at all we cannot even think mm-hmm. of it and uh, the people who are not reported for work and not communicated we are telling them to they can they can just resign you know because there is no point in continuing them they don't even communicate okay so we have put them in different categories hopefully the employees can come back and tell okay we are either okay with a cut out of the salary or we will continue the same salary there is no problem the question here is what is the output because working from home is not the same as working uh, in the in the, uh, in the factory it is totally different and pharma industry if you don't complete the whole circle we are not going to get the full results so it is going to be extremely difficult for us to work from home for a long time for short time a month or two is okay but beyond that what are we going to do so there there will be a very complex situation going forward so it is up to the employees to understand the senior employees to understand how they can work with the management and keep the management think the salary still manage the companies you know so it it's it's a, a co- uh, everybody has to co-opt and give their views that's what we think thank you thank you bodra sahab i think thank you for sharing yeah so let's you know bodra sahab we have taken exactly the same approach sales so can i make one point yes please yeah you know uh i would request this forum and and also the the industry forum is it possible that all of us can take a view that for the year 2021 either we have a increase on increments or promotions something like that because the problem is if individually each of our company takes a call then the problem of implementation is people will point out saying that the other company is doing it so why are we taking a regressive stand Impressive stand. I am just asking if it is possible for all of us to come together and take a view, saying that 
you know whatever the view may be that this year could be a sedate increment or a or a no increment digging what it, as a forum it will become an easier thing to uh, talk to the senior management and to see implementation because shell is a cost if 75% of the cost in service sector is employee cost and the increment is 10 to 12 or 13% average it is 5 6% of the overall cost that can be curtailed without impacting people because you are already going to pay them the current salary uh, the only thing is that you are saying can i take a view for one year and then you can pass on some of this cost saving to your customer you know get, get a good feel for the business but individually i think individual company trying to do it on their own may find it very difficult because there will be huge comparison of employees with other companies and attrition could spur up because then people will say well i will go to another company which is paying more. so just as a thought uh, if it is possible for us to come together on this one point let me open it up sunil maybe you could uh, uh, you could say uh, uh, well uh, i think legally uh, what you call uh, i i believe legally it is uh, uh, you can't an association or any forum cannot say do this uh, so but i think uh, on the point of uh, increments i think there's a, a a general consensus i don't think management has any bandwidth to even think of increments at this stage maybe in september or october you'll may or you know start looking whether anything is possible so i at least on that uh, count I, but i don't think any any forum or any association can uh, yes you can discuss it that this is what uh, what we can do but because there are unions uh, uh, in many companies okay leaving aside uh, sir, praveen being from the services you uh, we don't have a union or you don't have a, agreement so the uh, most companies would have unions there would be three or four years uh, agreement uh, clauses uh, field stuff uh, some of the com uh, companies are fmri uh, uh, unionized so there are one, uh, various uh, nuances to this uh, decision but i think on increments uh, I, i i believe that there would be a general consensus and uh, industry could get together and you know i think the employees themselves would come forward to say you know save our jobs <laughs> rather than uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah i think it's a great so, point um, i know that this is a top of your mind uh, issue i can feel that uh, and and i think it's important to uh, in my the two bits if i can add here is to be very authentic i think your employees know you you are yes. a fair employer uh, and uh, in the good times we have always stood by our employees employees will stand by you in difficult times if you are able to be very transparent open and uh, and able to explain to them that this is exactly why we are in this situation we are uh, passing through an a situation which we have never encountered before as long as we communicate it authentically and uh, and sincerely to each of our employees and also walk the talk right from the top to bottom Uh, i see that your your employees will will stand by you in this kind of situation it is only when they find that it is an ad hoc decision without a proper communication uh, that's where i think your hr teams and and i think ceos directly will have to perhaps uh, and i have done it in my in my in my assignment in the previous job when when i had to take some very tough you know at a year went very badly we couldn't give any incentive or bonuses to people and they took it they took it because we always gave so one year if it's a difficult period i'm sure you will be able to 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 handle this but i think the 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 trick of trick in this case is to be uh, very very authentic yeah. and sincere in your approach given that we have 15 more minutes to go uh, i would like to shift the gear a little bit i know that we didn't cover fully the cost part i think cash and cost is going to be something that's bothering you and every ceo going forward and you will probably need to do uh, a a zero based budgeting as they call it in the in the management parlance to challenge every possible line of your cost and see is it necessary and today every company uh, is looking at it do i need to have this meeting do i need to have this travel uh, every aspect will have to be looked into to make sure that uh, uh, the cost is contained uh, in order for you to have the right kind of cash flow 
but uh, if there are any top of the mind thoughts here, please do share at this point. In time. Can, can I share this? This Harish here? Yes, Harish. Thank you. Uh, I think being an SME, what challenge what I'm uh, finding now uh, is the cash flow. Now, the post-COVID, yes. the moment the, uh, uh, this one started, the lockdown has started, what we are facing is every vendor of mine is asking for an upfront payment, which was not the so uh, the case earlier. We were depending on them, for say, on a credit of 30 days or 60 days. But today, the challenge mm -hmm. what has happened is uh, we are not getting the payment from my customers on time, number one. Number two, we have cash flow challenges to pay my salaries. Number three, the business is down. Number four, the every supplier is asking for an upfront payment. So I don't know how do we, uh, it's going to be a big challenge. I don't know how do we cope up with that. Maybe some of the Harish, other parts. Yeah, yeah great, great point, Harish. I'll open it up. I think uh, if not anything, uh, Harish is a classical case uh, that we are facing. And I'm sure many of our friends in this room are facing. Sunil, you want to take it? You know, as it's all of us are in the same same boat. Uh, what do you call? You know, the tragedy is uh, in this time. Uh, I'm talking from personal experience, uh, where we want to support the uh, SMEs and make the payments, uh, and where we deal with a lot of large uh, companies, uh, multi-billion-dollar companies, and uh, they are the first ones to send a letter saying that in view of this. Your uh, payment terms of 45 days is now 60 days or 90 days. So it's like a catch 22 for the SMEs because you're dealing with the large companies on one side who have a team of, uh, you know, who uh, will uh, in invoke the force majeure clause and uh, say that you do it. So I, I empathize. Uh, we're, we're going facing the same thing. But I, I think the only way is uh, for the banks to be a little more liberal. Uh, that's one thing. And as Praveen has suggested, if we can go to the trade, uh, uh, I, I have not uh, seen it, but I will... Uh, try to uh, see. Uh, we can uh, approach. I think the government has uh, deferred, you know, a payment of GST and things like that by 15 days. I don't know whether uh, they can extend it uh, by another 30 days or 45 days. I think these are the only things from an association standpoint uh, that we can uh, make uh, uh, what you call representations. That that's what we, Thank can, you. we can do. Sandeep, would you like to? Give yeah, just this. one comment. Um, we all know what's happened to the price of oil. Okay, I mean, Brent futures are negative territory, meaning they will pay you to take the oil. <clears throat> uh, trade exchange futures are at $21, $22. Ethanol is now more expensive than oil. Yeah, I mean, the whole thing's a joke. Why is oil prices going up and up and up in India? Why, why is it not being passed on to the, to the, you know, the truck driver? All of us that are running factories. I mean, this is crazy. I'm still paying, I don't know, what it is, 77 rupees, 80 rupees, 90 rupees. You know, crazy numbers. When the oil is really available to you at 15 rupees or 20 rupees. Okay, TK, don't give me 20 rupees, but at least reduce it to 40 rupees. And if this, that's going to be a real, I mean, I don't know about you guys, but X percentage of our power comes from diesel or our boilers are required, which is again requires diesel or furnace oil or whatever. We can, as a, as a country, this is not a KPDMA or BCIC issue. This is a national issue. And I realize the country is right now getting a lot of revenue from that. But this is an issue that has to be managed at the prime minister's office level to say, guys, we need to find a compromise over here. We knew the country's need, but at the same time, look, we are bleeding as well. Absolutely. I think, Sandeep, these are very, very valid points. Um, Mr. Friends, you know, yes, please. Uh, I think there is, a, there is a notice saying that the, the meeting would end in five minutes uh, if uh, uh, I think the organizer, the, the host is uh, having some technical difficulty. Ah, OK. That, that, yeah. You, you know, as, as usual, you know, we have so many issues that we didn't even have sufficient, I mean, no time at all for question and answer. But I will just go back to Harish's problem and let's let's just face it. This is the real issue, real issue That's of, uh, right. of business continuity. Coming. Kiran Majumdar wants to join, but uh, the video is uh, not working. Oh, There's my goodness. See your bio is there, Ru Rupa, is there, Rupa, is there any way this can be extended by another 10 minutes or 15 minutes? It would be great to have uh, Kiran's uh, views on, uh, on this.
No, I think Rupa is not on the line. I think she's gone oh. out. You continue to send it there, Matt. I'll, I'll, I'll correspond with her on the WhatsApp. Yeah, uh, and you know, I just wanted to, you know, Arif made one point at the beginning when he said that um, his company is reaching out to their customers huh, in supply chain and with a rigorous follow up, let them know what is the requirement for next three to four months. They are, uh, you know, building a strong partnership. I think, Harish, important thing, and this may be easier said than done, but I think it is important to. Uh, engage with your vendors make them understand that these are the times when we need to partner there is no way if i take advantage of this situation and uh, and and arm twist you to pay me in advance for everything that i supply i think we are really talking very short term we need to build a strong confidence with them that we are going to overcome this together and to that extent i think there will be some give and take uh, that will have to be worked out, but I think it's important to engage them to show that how you as an organization are going to overcome this problem and uh, and when normalcy ret returns, I think these relationships are what's going to really uh, work. So there is a need for us to, you know, not just the procurement officer, but even at the CEO level, you will need to get involved uh, in, exactly. in these discussions. Yeah. Um, Friends, anything that's come to your top of the mind at this stage, I apologize for not doing a, a great job of, uh, of, of really, uh, you know, there are so many questions here which have been outstanding to respond. But I promise that uh, the organizers will take it forward. I will personally get involved to see that some of the questions we are able to give answers to uh, participants. But anything on top of your mind uh, before I hand, uh, hand you over back to our, uh, our hosts? Let me ask Sunil. Sunil, now since uh, what what do you think you can discuss it here for five minutes because the meeting may end. I I hope uh, I believe uh, Biocon people can hear as they are sitting in a group there. So anyway, uh, they can hear us, but you can't. That's what I'm getting the message here. Uh, they can't come on the video for some technical issue. But Sunil, oh, what, a... think, uh, what should yeah. we do? Post this, as we are just about to conclude in say five minutes, how shall we move this forward? What are some of the actions that you would like uh, uh, the group to take? And, and obviously, we will support you since I have a group of people working with me. I will work with you to make this happen. But what do you want to do? It? How do you want to take it? No, no, I think uh, one is that you're recording this. So there are points that you could we could actually pick out from these. Uh, there are a few things that are uh, action points that have come as good suggestions from uh, from an association view. So we'll make those uh, representations and uh, what we call take it forward. Uh, if there is a uh, these points like kind of a, you know uh, bullet points that uh, suggestions that have come that can be circulated to all the participants uh, would be a good idea. I think these are the few things that we could take uh, forward. If, if there is an, uh, a demand or a request for another meeting like this in a week's time to just focus on one, uh, what we call uh, subject, maybe we could get back. That is also possible, but uh, that uh, that's something we could work on. All right, oh, so I think that's great. We will, Thank you. Uh, uh, what I will do is uh, we'll hear or uh, show uh, some of my team members will hear this out and make the bullet points yes. and circulate to all those who have participated now. We will yes, also, also the questions, that. I think you would be able to record the questions that have come because uh, we could answer that, uh, you know, also. Yeah. All right. That's we can do it in the chat box. I can, I'll tell BCAC whether it will be recorded, I suppose, the chat box, right? I don't know how yeah. it works. If it is recorded, we'll record those. We'll send out the slides and then, of course, um, we'll take it forward. I think uh, organizing a meeting is very difficult, so Neil, we know how it is, how much we have to uh, you know, it's, you know, we have to keep on reminding and reminding. No, I you know. think uh, it is now that you have these uh, participants in your thing, you can just send them the link uh, again if you had, because you, you're not now trying to involve. I think uh, there are and uh, who are who are here would be the only people you'll invite again. All right. Yeah. All right. So Once again, thank you, oh. thank you, everyone. Thank you. No. Thank, Thank you, you, everyone. Take care and stay safe. Thanks. Thanks. Bye, everybody. Bye.